Here we are with some guests, and it's a great privilege to have today with us Penny Marsh and David Golding. And as you can see, so we're wearing our, our running t-shirts. I've got my virtual Great North <laughs> Run, Penny's got hers, uh, and David has his as well. So let's find out about who these uh, special people are. So Penny, tell us a bit about yourself. Who are you? Uh, where are you based and what are you doing? Okay, well, it's um, really nice to be with you. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm Penny Marsh and I work for the Southeastern Baptist Association as a pioneer minister in Ebbsfleet, which is a healthy new town um, and a new garden city. And I also support the pioneers who are working in the Southeastern Baptist Association too. Thank you. And David? So I'm uh, David Golding, a retired but non-retired member of staff at Newcastle University and also a member since, dear me, it's an awful long time ago, um, uh, 1968 of Whitley Bay Baptist Church on Tyneside. And uh, David, you, you've done a lot of work uh, with uh, uh, campaigning for uh, debt relief and uh, uh, for, for awareness of climate change and respond to that as well. And we'll, we'll hear more about that in a moment, I'm sure. So, so you both have an interest in running like me. Mm -hmm. You both have a connection uh, with the Great North Run. So again, we'll start with you, Penny. Tell, tell us about your interest in running and, and, and also how you see running as, as being transformational and what's your connection with the Great North Run? Oh, great. Well, my connection is I got a ballot place for this year. So I was really excited and looking forward to coming up and doing an iconic race, as it were. But of course, it's all been um, postponed at the moment. So I have done the Great North Run solo. Um, so I've just completed 40 runs in 78 days and looking forward to getting my medal. Um, but I came to running quite late. Um, when we were doing a sponsored event, a friend said to me, are you going to run 5K? And this was about four years ago. I was in my 50s. I was like, no, couldn't. Don't like running. Hate people who run. Never. I was useless at PE and all of that. And she said, wouldn't it be amazing if we did? And we're like, hmm, wouldn't it? So we did 5K, then we did park runs, then we did 10K, then we did half marathons. And I guess now for me, um, running has become an important part of my life. It's something that I kind of gets me going in the morning and I've just found the wider benefits of it have been huge so yeah I'm pretty one of those crazy boring running people now but I love it and we've also been able to use that missionally as well but certainly in terms of my own well-being I've seen a huge impact and it's just helped me I think connect a bit more with God as well at times I was more of a prayer walker than someone who finds it easy to sit still so I find it's a good time to pray listen to worship music or whatever um, and actually process talks often park runs great for practicing the sunday talk that 30 <laughs> minutes or so just gives me enough time to clear my head so yeah lots of benefits and i'm a bit of a running fanatic now thank you uh, there's a parallel to me i didn't start running till i turned 50 and uh, a similar journey to yourself so mm. you worked your way up presumably you'll be doing marathons before long and then ultra marathons uh, uh, I'm never an ultra. I have said I'd like to do one one marathon before I'm 60, but I look at all that training and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure I'll ever get there. <clears throat> so David, likewise, tell us a bit more about your connection with the Great North Run and uh, uh, how you see that opportunity of that partnership as, as transformational. Yes, well, um, I'm a complete contrast to Penny, and indeed, I think perhaps to you, Paul, because I'm a walker and in my youth a mountaineer I might say and I've never been any good at running but uh, in the year 2000 and 2001 I took a leading role in the relaunch of Jubilee Debt Campaign which had been Jubilee 2000 uh, the campaign to cancel third world debt uh, and I was elected uh, as a founder member uh, of the board of trustees in March 2001, uh, someone said something, I won't quote it in full, something said something about better to have you on the inside, David, than on the outside. I, I, you probably know the quotation. Um, and of course, the campaign had very little money with the relaunch and everything had run down, uh, 2000 was starting off. So I thought I'd use my position at Newcastle University and the support of the vice chancellor, which I had there, and the staff and student unions to recruit a team for the run, for the Great North Run, to raise money for Jubilee Debt Campaign and other agencies 
working to curb extreme poverty and climate change. And last year, 2019, was the 17th year I've organized a team and the cumulative total we've raised over the years topped 250,000 last year, which was of course a great, great joy. Uh, I did the run once in 2000. Yeah, you're just spring chickens at this. I did the run once for the first and last time in 2010 to, as I put it, celebrate my 70th. Yes, and I did get round and there were 15,000 people behind me. Um, uh, um, well done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but point to be made, this, uh, I'm an honorary chaplain uh, of the university. This is on the bottom of all my emails. Tens of thousands of people read my stuff you know, time, various times of the year because they're all put out because of the support of the vice chancellor. So I, I do believe it gives the, uh, the Christian community uh, some good profile. Uh, apart, of course, from the, the value of the, I'd like to say about the value of what we've been doing very briefly at some stage. Thank you. And, and uh, as somebody who's run the Great North Run three times now, I'm just aware that, that there are churches along the route that are part of the support, that, that, that give out uh, um, oranges and jelly babies and bottles of water and cheer you and clap you, yes. uh, along with many others. And, and it's just fantastic to see the Great North Run and, and these other big mm. participation events as opportunities for transformation. So many people raising money for good causes. It's always very moving for me to see people with uh, medical charities on their sh shirts and they say I'm raising money for so-and-so and you know there's a bereavement or a loss or somebody who's in, in mm. extreme uh, need. Uh, so it's always very moving, isn't it, to, to, yeah. to be part of this kind of event. Um, so Penny, you've said a bit about how, how running connects with your faith and, and sermon preparation, what have you, but you also have um, a, a missional outreach that involves uh, running. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, well, we were in Ed Street thinking we've got a blank sheet of paper. How can we help make disciples and just become a Christian community in the community and engage with people who wouldn't perhaps normally come to church? So there was a lot of emphasis on it being a healthy new town. Lots of things about living a healthy lifestyle. And at the same time, God had brought together four of us who loved running somebody who was a fitness instructor and had lots of equipment and was a Christian and a training minister and somebody else who was a healthy walk leader and a couple of people who were great at hospitality. So we thought, nah, something here, we could do something around health and fitness. But I realized that nobody was talking about spiritual health. And I thought, that's our key. That's something we can bring to the table. So we've said we will do this thing and we will focus on spiritual health from a Christian perspective because we're a church and that's what we know. Um, so we, yeah, we do this thing where we have been doing on Sundays where we meet at nine and there's a choice of a hit class, the running group or walk or just simply come for coffee. Then we all pile back at 10 a.m., have breakfast together and that flows into a short interactive talk that's very geared at people who maybe have no faith or haven't been you know Christians for a while um, and then so it's very communal which has obviously meant we've had to adapt strongly and we're still working out how we do that in our COVID times but it has been really lovely because the people who are connecting with us um, many of them don't have faith but they are engaging and that's been great and we've done a couch to 5k and that's probably one of my biggest thrills is seeing people who didn't know if they could, but wanted to give it a go. Because I think if I can run, then anybody can. And also that kind of starting small and building up is a principle that kind of, a lot of this stuff really flows into Christianity. So I guess our key verse is John 10, 10. Jesus said he came that we would have life in all its fullness. And we want to incorporate the whole of life into what we do as a Christian community here. Wonderful, thank you very much. And I know we've got a running theme uh, this time, but, but those who are watching, you might just wonder how your interests and your passions can be expressed in mission, how you can connect with others, um, because there will be a spiritual dimension to all the things that, that we, we, we take pleasure in and, and find help, healthy and helpful. Uh, so, so thanks, Penny. Uh, David, any, any last word from you? Uh, anything that you want to say uh, regarding uh, the things that you're passionate about uh, that, that connect with the Great North Run? I want to say something about how this relates to my faith. By the way, I, for the last 10 years, I've organized a, a service on the eve of the Great North Run in St. Thomas's Church. 
um, a, a service of Christian worship, which everyone's free to come to, for our supporters and also for the runners. Uh, not many runners have come, but we've nevertheless had some good, good speaking. I've done it. <laughs> I really appreciated it. Now, how does this relate to my faith? I can't say, I say to myself every day, Jesus would want me to do this, you know, um, uh, though I, I do believe that. Um, I think a major influence on me, major motivation, is my sense of immense gratitude to God for the wonderful life he's given to me uh, and my desire to respond appropriately. And so uh, in consequence of that, uh, to use the phrase, um, I, sure, uh, I scorn delights and, li uh, and live laboriously every day. Um, and so on at uh, this sort of stuff and thing. I do want to say something about uh, transformational change, which can result simply when you take the opportunities that are at hand. I said how the opportunities are ahead. Now, Jubilee Debt Campaign secured the cancellation of 150 billion US dollars by its work. We're still going strong, um, despite the minuscule uh, scale of its budget. This is what President Ellen Sir, Sir Leif, uh, Johnson Sirloif, Sirleaf, the, the elected president of Liberia, said about uh, first elected woman president in the continent, by the way. She said, let me commend and applaud the tremendous work you are doing. Our country is an example of how international debt cancellation advocacy, such as yours, can truly move mountains. And in 74 of the poorest countries, child mortality has reduced, been reduced by over two thirds. Um, so progress is without precedent in human history. Of course, the current crisis will have set things back. We don't know how badly, but it will have done. But nevertheless, that progress is astonishing. I do have a sense of immense blessing of God on our work, that debt relief has had a significant contribution to that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so whatever it is, um, you know, these, 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 taking the opportunities as they arise, just depending on your position, can be, can be very good and very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you both of you for joining us today. Uh, let me pray for you and your continuing work. Uh, and uh, may you know God's blessing in the walking and the running uh, and the journey each day as you follow Christ. So, Lord God, we thank you that uh, you've called Penny and David to serve you in these wonderful ways. Thank you for the difference that you are making through them and their ministries uh, amongst the world's poorest, amongst those who uh, uh, are finding faith in uh, the Ebbsfleet area. And we ask that you will continue to equip them and use them well uh, and that their ministries will grow and expand and that more and more people will be influenced by their lives and examples. May your blessing be upon them and their work this day and onwards. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you both so much for being with us today. Really appreciate it. God bless you both.